Hi, I'm Kiari, and this is the Pablo Picasso presentation. Now, a leader is a person who conquers trials and tribulations and makes a cultural impact while doing what they love. And Pablo Picasso is connected to all of those leader traits. Picasso conquered in impoverished Spain, thrived in the painting room, and had powerful messages in all of his artwork. Now, Pablo Picasso was born in Malaga, Spain in 1881. As you can see, Malaga, Spain doesn't have a modern, a modern look to it as it looks like it's a very old town and has very old architecture and just it doesn't look like the modern world that we live in today and as you can see Ma it's Madrid and then this is where Picasso was born in Malaga Spain in 1881 growing up Picasso lived during a time where there was a political movement called anarchism going around and right here as you can see this is like the basic you know rule of anarchism a law no person may rule over another. Uh, this is their goal. And anarch anarchy means without rulers. Anarch is opposed to domination of any individual or group of individuals by another. They favor a consensual order based on voluntary cooperation, mutual aid, and the maximization of individual liberty. And during this time, uh, anarchism wanted to get rid of development and wanted to have a primitive ownership where people could take care of themselves and show that the, there was no need for government and everybody could uh, thrive and prosper on their own. Now, growing up, Picasso had the potential and quality to be a great leader. Pablo Picasso was a child prodigy. At 14, his father said that Picasso was better than him and vowed to never paint again. At 16, he was admitted to the Royal Academy of Madrid, Spain. It's a beautiful place on the inside and out. So at 16, he was admitted to the Academy of Madrid. The Royal Academy of Madrid and there were no other schools he could attend to better him as an artist as he showed showed Spain that he was too good of an artist to be living there. Now being a child prodigy that influenced his attitude to stay young and become fascinated in what he created and what made Picasso unique and different than other painters is that he never wanted to understand his art or art at all. He never looked for creativity he found it and Picasso found what excited him and moved moved him at the time and created it so basically he thought of something and said this is what I want to create you can see in child, in child with a Dove in 1901 you can see this must be a symbol of hope and peace at the time and as you can see in 1903 from 1904 and the old guitars you can see that he must have had some kind of feeling of depression and sadness going on so usually whatever he felt or felt like he needed to make he would go out and create it so in 1904, Picasso arrived and settled in Paris. In Spain, he conquered poverty and troubles of become and troubles of becoming something in an impoverished settlement, and it motivated him to become successful and become the person he was. So in Par but in Paris, no one suffered like him and was changed by poverty, and that left him lonely and made his painting sad and depressing. And what I'm saying is that in, that in Paris, he felt isolated from everybody else because he couldn't relate to them and they and they couldn't relate to him. 1904. When he was still living in Spain, there was much disease and corruption going on, and nobody could really take care of themselves. And so in 1904, you could see when he painted this that, and while he was still living in Spain, that there was much uh, disease and corruption. You see that they don't look up to health, and they don't have much to eat or drink, and they're just wondering what could have, what could have happened, and what could have been. 1901, you could see in the self-portrait of Picasso that he doesn't have a very, uh, have a face with emotion. He has a face of like depression, and you can see that the poverty, that poverty in his childhood has taken a toll on him in his older years. And you can see that he doesn't, he's not affected by much after experiencing a lot in Spain. In 1907, while finally settling in Paris, he painted the, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, the Les Demoiselles de Vignon in 1907. It was one of the last paintings he made that dealt with the with Spain's problems and hopelessness like I was saying with the dep with depression and the disease and corruption Picasso shocked many people with this painting and Picasso also made a h historical impact he wanted people to see what he saw disease horror and ruthlessness in Spain so before this painting was created women were usually painted as symbols of beauty but when in this painting you can see that women with no beauty and it looks like death is shocking, and this is what shocked the world and everybody around Picasso. He used his primitive senses to make a painting to violate and shock civilization. 
And like I said with anarchism, the main goal of anarchism was to go back into a primitive leadership and ownership of, of the world. And so this is what influenced Picasso during this time. Picasso usually painted things that were primitive at, before, this, before this painting and before cubism. And so <clears throat> he used his primitive senses to make a painting to violate and shock civilization. He used his primitive influence to make people think about life in a different perspective and challenge the world's problems as he saw it. Well, later in 1907, pa Pablo Picasso created Cubism. Cubism promised everyone of a modern world. Picasso loved his primitive influence on paintings. As, as I explained, that anarchism, the main goal of anarchism was to have a primitive uh, influence and leadership and ownership and take things back to a primitive time where everybody can take care of, them, take care of themselves and didn't need... Uh, they need government to, you know, help people and help people in life. As you can see, Picasso loved his primitive influence on paintings, but it was a stylistic revolt, showing love for modernity instead and the manufactured. And Cubists also wanted people to see paintings in different points of view. Everyone was entitled to their own view and love of the painting, a love of paintings, during this period of Cubism from 1907 to 1914. And as you can see, these two paintings right here. Girl with the Mandolin in 1910 and Juan Grease portrait from 1912. You can see that here's a manufactured item, and then you can also see that it's a different view. This is not how you would usually depict the girl with the mandolin of a, or a usual self portrait of somebody, but as you can see during cubism, that, that's, that wasn't the goal, and they wanted you to see something different. The goal of the cubists were for people to understand and love the manufactured and also see things in a different perspective and not see things how they always seen it all their life. Picasso showed the world his view of life and that people should think different in life. Picasso conquered poverty and thrived off painting. He loved what he was doing. Picasso also used his influence of anarchism, primitive life, and modernity in art to make him stand out as a painter. The cultural impact he made was showing the world that the past should never be forgotten, people must think for themselves and challenge civilization, and that the modern world should be respected. People must be grateful for it. And that's what a leader should do. Make people better themselves and the community. Make people want to create an impact on society and make people grateful for the life they have. Picasso did this, making him a fantastic leader.